Hi, my name is Catherine Fecto. I'm the assistant curator here at Old Sturbridge Village. And in the past, you've heard us discuss some of the ways that we care for the objects in our museum collection. And today I'm here to talk to you about some of the strategies that we use, in particular, our IPM plan. IPM stands for Integrated Pest Management, and simply put, it is proactive monitoring in spaces across the museum campus uh, to protect the collections and identify pest presence and threats as they arise. Pests come in many shapes and sizes, but we primarily focus on those that feed on uh, different types of organic materials like wood, feathers, fur, um, and other animals at different points in their developmental cycle. For example, webbing and case-making clothes moths uh, pose threats to uh, some of the textiles in our collections. Silverfish like to feed on starchy materials like wallpaper paste and uh, the um, glue in book bindings. And powder post beetles um, pose threats to different types of woods in our museum collection. Our current IPM plan was developed by one of our former colleagues and goes about protecting the museum collection in a few different ways. Uh, first and foremost, we have uh, blunder traps like these um, positioned in many of the houses and storage spaces across the OSV campus. And these are sticky traps, so as uh, pests try to walk across the traps, they are stuck. And we check these traps every two months and record all the pests that we find, which allows us to identify patterns um, and track populations over time so we can notice trends. Second, uh, in addition to the committed efforts of our housekeeping department, we also do routine curatorial housekeeping in spaces across campus on a regular basis. And this does a number of things. First, it allows us to remove dust and dirt and uh, materials that can be uh, attractive to pests, but can also be um, sources for mold and mildew to grow. Secondly, it allows us to put eyes on different parts of our collection, examine their condition, and identify if they've experienced any pest damage um, so that we can treat them appropriately. If they have experienced any damage, we have a few options for treating these objects. First, we'll isolate them uh, and take documentary photographs, examine their condition, and then we have a few uh, treatment opportunities. In one case, we have our anoxic fumigation chamber um, where the objects will go and sit for a period of time to um, be in a space that has no oxygen um, and eliminate any pest threats that are there. We also have a chest freezer on site that can be used to treat some smaller objects um, since very, very cold temperatures will also be an effective deterrent for pests. Certainly, if this routine housekeeping encounters any larger level problems or infestations, we will certainly call in outside help. But the purpose of this routine monitoring is to prevent any of these larger level events from happening. So I have a few objects here that are experiencing some minor pest issues at the moment, which does happen. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is talk you through what I see and uh, what we will do to take care of these objects. So our first friend here is a folding stool, and I should mention that it had lost its textile seat long before it came into the museum collection. This is not something that happened on our watch. But when we were doing some routine housekeeping in a storage space last week, we discovered that there has been some moth damage uh, to the remaining textile fragments on the side of the seat. In particular, we have some moth casings present, either uh, from a webbing clothes moth or a case-making clothes moth. And so what will happen next is that this object will go into the fumigation chamber. Afterwards, once it comes out, we will very carefully clean off the casings, uh, document its condition at that point, um, update the database records, and then it, can, uh, it will be all set to go back on the shelf where we'll monitor it for a little while just to make sure that we've gotten everything. So this trunk is another good example, though slightly different from the stool. So this one we also discovered last week during some routine cleaning. However, luckily, this one doesn't appear to have sustained any pest damage. However, we did notice in some of the cracks and crevices in the bottom that there was some dust and dirt buildup as well as a few shed pest casings. So again, this one will get a cautionary fumigation just in case, but realistically vacuuming, gentle vacuuming, should be enough to solve this problem. 
So these systems and strategies that I've talked about are one of the tools that we use to help protect the museum collection. And I really hope that you've enjoyed this behind the scenes peek at some of the less visible uh, ways that we work to make sure that we are caring for and preserving our collection for the long term.